step then, we'll go ahead and implement the toString method. Where do I want to add that? <laughs> Let's add our methods in alphabetical order following the diagram. There is no toString method in the diagram. Did I do it wrong? No. Well, we'll have to ask the author why the toString method was not part of the UML diagram, and we'll just leave it at that. The toString method returns a string. It's called toString, and it takes no parameters. And the only job of a toString method is to return a textual representation of the beetle. All right. We could, as Peter points out on page 20, we could just print out the value of each of these variables. That's not very exciting, as exciting as these things get. So instead what we'll do is we'll print out a visual representation of our beetle. So the first thing he does is he says, if we have a body, And if you read all the way through to the bottom of that method on the bottom of page 22, I'm on page 21 at the moment, and you flip over to page 22, you'll see there is an else with our if. If there isn't a body, we would have to return a string. The return type is string. So we say, doo -doo -doo, no beetle parts. Yet. All right. But if there is a body, then we have to build up. Then we have to build up an entire result that will represent our beetle. So we have a body, but we need to be able to print all the other bits first. So are there are feelers? All right. And then the eyes come next. Are there eyes? Oops. Sorry about that. It's not if there are eyes. Is there a head? Is the next question. Then if there is a head, are there eyes? Alright. And then we have to ask about the legs. I see what's going on here. Notice this is there's some kind of nesting going on here. So if there's a head, we then also have to check about the eyes. Um, are there legs? And that takes up... Wow, this is complex. So that takes up pretty much the rest of these things. And the last thing we do is we've returned the result. Here we say that the result starts off empty and the last thing we do is we return the result if we have a body. If we don't have a body we return no beetle parts yet. We actually can test this at this point. We can create a new beetle. We can inspect it. We can see it doesn't have a body. So we should be able to say to string, and it will say there are no beetle parts yet. Now, this is the exciting bit. I might trim the video here. Eh, we'll see. Let's go ahead and start putting some bits in. If there are more than zero feelers, I'm going to need to add some things to this beetle. We're going to add a left feeler. And if there are two feelers, this is the kind of tricky bit, then we say we'll also add a right hand feeler. Now you might be looking at this going, what did you just write? Are there any feelers? If there are, is at least one feeler, 
we need to add the left hand feeler because what we're trying to build up is something that looks like we should probably have a picture of that we want something that looks like this do, 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 do. oops uh, it's hard to do this kind of drawing All right we're building up a beetle that looks like this uh oh Oh, that's the letter V. There we go. So if we have one feeler, we'll do the left hand. And if we have two, we'll do the right hand. The reason we do greater than zero is because if we only had one and we asked that, then eventually we might have two and then this would be wrong. So we don't want that. And we have a double slash because a single slash has special meaning. It's a way of escaping a character. So we have to say, actually, we want the left hand slash. If we have two feelers, then we're going to add another feeler to our string. And the last line here says, set result equal to the result of adding a new line to the end. So that way, we effectively hit return right here. That is how we do feelers. Now we ask the question, if there is a head, All right, I'm looking at the code. We now have to do two things. We have to, well, really we have to deal with the eyes. Um, I want that there. If there's a head, we then ask the question, are there eyes? So we can't do anything with the eyes until we have the head. If we have more than one or more eyes, then the result is at least going to look like this. I'm going to add in a small o. Otherwise, we're going to add in an empty space. All right. The head is the thing in the middle. And that's a big o. I'm going to add a comment that says that. I'm going to say this is the left hand eye. So if we have one eye, we'll add a left hand eye. Then we we have the head because we've already asked, is there a head? And then down here, do we have two eyes? And so that's the next question that gets asked. If eyes equals two, then doo -doo -doo, Result plus equals slash n. Oops. Sorry. That's a mistake. Result plus equals the O. And we always want to end our collection of I's with a new line. All right. And we can see, and I sometimes do this, I put a comment here that says end if head. That way I know that it's related to this if statement, because sometimes it's hard to keep track of these long bracketed expressions. You can see there's so many brackets that popped in here. And keeping track of those is sometimes one of the hard parts. So do I have this correct? So far I do.